musicians, Coach Sam here from AYS, and in this video we're going to take a look at how to correctly hold our instrument and produce different sounds on it, whether that be with our right hand or our bow. First, you want to make sure your violin is positioned somewhere between your chin, your collarbone, and your shoulder, with your chin resting on the chin rest, and your nose pointed somewhere at a 45 degree angle from the scroll, and your head not tilting anywhere or in any specific direction. You should maintain good enough posture that the neck of your instrument remains parallel to the floor. This just means no extreme angles like leaning back or slouching forward. Try and get yourself to the point where you can hold your violin without the support of your left hand. One of the ways we can produce sound on our instrument is through pizzicato or by plucking the string with our right hand. To pizzicato, anchor your right hand to the violin by planting your thumb to the right corner of your fingerboard. Next, allow your fingers to hover over the strings. Then, set your finger over the desired string, wrapping the pad of your finger around it slightly, pull, and release. Set, pull, set, pull. For louder or harsher sounding pizzicatos, pull or lift the string higher before releasing it. For quieter or softer sounding pizzicatos, don't tug on the string as much before releasing it. Barely wrap the tip of your finger around the string before you lift up. Correct left hand positioning involves planting your thumb on the left side of the neck with the pad of your thumb resting on the neck and slightly above the strings. Your fingers then come around, up, and over forming a C-shaped tunnel big enough for a pencil to fit through as your fingers should be curved and not flat. So I should mention, it's not your hand making a tunnel, so you're not extend overextending your hand above the fingerboard. In fact, your first knuckle right here is going to be touching the fingerboard, and then it's your fingers that make the tunnel when they're curved. You shouldn't feel any pain right here in your wrist. If you do, your hand is overextended above the fingerboard. So you should have your fingers curved enough where you should be able to just slide a pencil through. The tips of your fingers, not the pads, then rest on the strings with enough pressure to close any space in between the string and the fingerboard. Your wrist shouldn't be overly bent in any specific direction, not towards the instrument or towards the scroll. So I should be able to tape a ruler to your forearm and your hand and your wrist and it shouldn't be able to pop off in any way. Another way to produce sound on our violin is by using our bow. Before we use our bow, we must always tighten it by turning the pinky screw clockwise when the hair is facing up. Tighten until the space between the hair and the stick is about that of a pencil. Careful never to touch the hair as the oils on your skin will deprive you of the friction that you need to make sound once your bow comes into contact with the string. We create friction between the bow hair and the string by adding rosin or resin, a sticky substance made from conifer trees. To apply rosin, wrap your right hand around the frog of the bow Pinch the rosin in your left hand. Place it flat on your bow. And with constant pressure, apply four to six strokes from frog to tip. Frog to tip. You can simultaneously move both of your hands if you'd like, either or. And remember, your bow isn't a lightsaber. If you take care of it, it will take care of you. To hold the bow, place the pad of your thumb 
on the underside of the bow stick near where the pad and the frog meet. Keep your thumb bent to make sure you don't have a banana thumb. Next you're going to wrap your middle finger over and around so that it's touching your middle finger with your first knuckle bent and resting on the stick. Following in suit would be your third finger. Your third finger is going to rest on the stick with its first knuckle bent right next to your middle finger. Your pinky is going to rest on the end of the stick near the screw. And your first finger should be next to your second and should naturally lean towards the tip, almost touching that silver winding if you have one. And it's okay if it's even on it, too. The key is to have your first knuckles, first, second, and third fingers resting on the stick with your pinky on top and curved. Usually, your wrist will be below your knuckles. Because your fingers are wrapped around the bow, in a specific way. You don't need to hold the bow with a grip tighter than that of how you would hold someone's hand. An exercise to help you strengthen your bow grip is the extend and flex exercise. You can do this while holding the tip, again not touching the hair, just the stick. You're going to straighten all of your fingers including your thumb and bring it back up to proper hold. So extend, flex, extend, flex. You can do this with something as light as a mechanical pencil. Again, you want your thumb bent, middle finger wrapped around, first knuckle resting, third finger, first knuckle resting, pinky curved on top, and first finger leaning towards the tip and extend, flex, extend, flex, extend, flex. When using your bow to make sound on your violin, remember the four P's of playing. Posture, placement, pressure, and parallel. Our posture can affect the direction and the resonance of our sound. So make sure you're standing with your back straight, your shoulders back, and try to avoid slouching because that means your F-holes are going to be pointing down when you want them to be pointing up and out. Placement. Where you place your bow on the string can have an effect on your sound. Playing over the bridge, for example, produces a soft, quiet, hollow sound, also known as soltasto. Playing close to the bridge produces a sort of harsh, pointy, metallic sound, also known as sol ponticello. <laughs> Playing somewhere in between the fingerboard and bridge will produce the sweetest, fullest sound. Pressure. When we press our bow into the string using the index finger of our bow hand, this can affect our sound as well. To play loud, use more pressure or press the bow into the string more using your index finger. <laughs> to play soft, use less pressure or barely press into the string, just lightly tug on it rather. So loud, soft, loud, soft. As I mentioned previously, rosin is a very sticky substance, so you want to prevent any buildup from occurring underneath your strings, on your strings, or on the face of your instrument. So after each time you practice, make sure you're wiping down the face of your instrument 
as well as your strings to prevent any rosin buildup. All right, musicians, that concludes this week's video. I hope you all enjoyed it, and I hope you all feel more confident in exploring the different sounds you can make on the violin. Happy practicing. Bye.